We're not just celebrating what we did. We're remembering what we did and honoring the people that did just this. And those 17 individuals or 17 individuals along with the 75,000 people that came from our military bases in North Carolina and went overseas to Kuwait and Iraq and all of the Middle East and Europe to support this noble effort. So we're here to honor those individuals. And we're going to do it through several ways. First of all, I'm proud to announce a $100,000 memorial fund for the development of a traveling exhibit honoring and memorizing, memorializing the first Persian Gulf War because we shouldn't forget these individuals. Also, I'm proud to say that the North Carolina Division of Military and Veterans Affairs will distribute this fund to the state's Museum of History as part of the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources for the development of this memorial. North Carolina has also been in possession of a $100,000 fund since the gift was made by the Kuwaiti government in 1992 as seed money for a larger memorial. However, for the past 24 years, this money has just sat off on the side. Well, now we're gonna start spending it. So the next generation does not forget what happened and what sacrifices were made. I'm proud that our new Department of Military and Veterans Affairs made this a priority so that there's no longer any delay in honoring our veterans and fallen service men and women. Now the names of the fallen from North Carolina are enshrined in a proclamation that I signed that pays tribute to all military personnel who served in the Persian Gulf War as, those, as well as those who gave their lives. And I want to give copies of these two proclamations to two very special people that are here today. The first is Patricia Harris, who is a Gulf War combat veteran, having served as a sergeant in the United States Army. After her active duty was complete, she began serving our veterans in a variety of leadership positions. She is a past state commander of the American Legion and currently serves as the commander of the North Carolina Veterans Council. In 2007, she founded a Women's Veterans Support Service Incorporated, which specializes in providing special support for crisis management for women veterans, which I'm sure was revolutionary at the time. And people weren't thinking of that need and you had the foresight to do just that. And she has been a wonderful resource to us in the newly formed Department of Military and Veterans Affairs under our new secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Patricia Harris and give her a round of applause. The person I'd like to introduce is Thomas Chapman. Now, one of the names I read earlier was of Army Staff Sergeant Christopher Chapman. In fact, two individuals, two members of our military died from Pollocksville. One being Army Sergeant Christopher J. Chapman. On February 21st, 1991, Sergeant Chapman was a member of a helicopter crew on an urgent medical evacuation deep inside enemy territory. He was trying to save a life. After recovering a wounded soldier, his aircraft crashed in a violent sandstorm. And sadly, Sergeant Chapman lost his life. For the bravery he exhibited during that mission, Sergeant Chapman was awarded the Purple Heart, the Materia Service Medal, and the Air Medal with V device for valor. Sergeant Chapman was described as selfish, a trait that he no doubt inherited from his family. His brother Michael began a quest to memorialize the North Carolina troops that died in Persian Gulf War. Part of that effort resulted in the $100,000 gift from the Kuwaiti government that will be used for this traveling memorial. Therefore, it is only fitting that a copy of this proclamation goes to the Chapman family. And here to accept that proclamation on behalf of the family is Sergeant Chapman's nephew. Thomas Chapman. 
So let's give Thomas and Michael an applause for their incredible service to this country.